What's cracking everybody You're here with me King ETO and before I start this video did y'all like that did y'all like our new opening this opening could not have been possible if it wasn't for the amazing tribe aka K Wills he did all well he, he didn't do all but he did most of the work you know creating the TV the static all that stuff I did the editing with the sounds I hope you enjoy it but that is the only reason why this video is special. If you're watching this on a phone and you keep flipping your phone trying to see why is King ETL upside down? Well, I am upside down because sometimes your life gets flipped upside down. Now, I could start talking like the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air and explain how it got there, but I'll just fix it. There we go. Now, even though I said French Prince of Bel-Air, I'm not doing that this episode. This episode, I'm talking about another place where everything is flipped upside down. Well, it's kind of flipped on its side more than upside down. And I'm talking about Wayside. Yes, Wayside, the awesome Nickelodeon cartoon that came out around 2005. I loved it as a kid. I rewatched a few of the episodes before making this, and I rewatched the pilot movie. I loved it too. Some of the jokes don't really hold up to the new form of the comedy I like today, but they're really, it's still a good show to watch if you got nothing to do but waste some time. But before I start going into the cartoon, you need to know about the book series that started it all. Wayside School book series was written by Lewis Scar. Scar, Scar. I'm sorry I can't pronounce your name, Lewis. He wrote that book series from between 1978 through 1995. Not all of the books were like written that long out. There's only three books in the entire series. And each book is made of 30 chapters to represent the 30 floors of the school. The first book is called Sideways Stories from the Wayside. The second one is called Wayside School is Falling Down. And the third one is called Wayside School Gets a Little Bit Weirder. Now these are books that I read as a child. I remember I read them in class as a child and I liked them because it takes your normal idea of what a school should be and it flips it on its head with wacky projects or crazy rules and interesting characters. That's why I thought it was a good idea to review the TV show. Now, before I get into the show, you need to know that there are a few differences between the book and the cartoon. The main differences that you need to know if you're going to start reading the book series before you watch the cartoon. In the book series, Todd isn't the new kid or the transfer student, although there are transfer students in the school. Also, the character Marcia isn't portrayed as the roller skates wearing super hype tomboy that she is in the show. She is portrayed more as like a not nice, but you know, a normal girl for love of ice cream. Those are only things you need to know about the cartoon in the book. Now we can get into the actual show. A long time ago, at a time not really recorded by any date or logic, a guy had an idea to build a school. He wanted to build a school at least 30 feet long, one floor high. That way there'll be 30 classrooms, a good normal size school where you can get a lot of students in there, teach them everything they need to know. But somebody kind of messed up that plan. A construction worker thought 30 feet long, he actually meant 30 feet tall and built this giant towering school with one classroom per floor called Wayside. Now the Wayside series was made November 19, 2005. It ended January 15, 2008, and it was a series that I overall enjoyed. The main plot of the series started with the Wayside School movie. They had a movie before the show, to, you know, to see if people would like it after the movie. People had such good response to it, they decided you're greenlit to have two seasons. Those two seasons consisted of 26 episodes of hilarious random antics. But let me start talking about the plot. So our show involved the new kid Todd. Todd transferred to Wayside from his old school because of a reason that I won't tell you, but it's a reason that he considers a dark and horrible past. But I'm not going to tell you because I want you to go watch the movies. This is really cool. Anyway, Todd transferred here. He heard the rumors about the school being 30 feet tall. Thought they were fake. Turns out it was real. And on his first day of school, he met a bunch of random characters. He met 
a teacher that was throwing heavy objects out of the 30th floor window. He met kids that choose to enter through the window instead of using the actual door. He met a crazy principal and a nice handyman. So the overall plot of the cartoon series is Todd trying to find his place in this weird school. Like through the, through the movie pilot, it was Todd trying to fix what he thought was wrong with the school. Like he tried to help the people in the really, really small classroom. He tried to give real food to the school cow. Yes, the school has a cow. Well, it has multiple cows, but that's for a different story. And he even saved the classroom from getting smashed by the, con by the trash compactor that actually is their room. That is a long story too. Watch the movie. Anyway, the show was more about Todd and the gang of his friends, you know, well, they, they fit in, but Todd didn't. Because it's like, like, think about it right now. Like, imagine you go into a school. It's your first day. You meet the teacher. She seems nice. She says, take your seat. You walk to your seat. And she picks up your desk and throws it out the window. And then you get in trouble for not sitting down, even though she just threw your seat out the window. Then you get in trouble for asking her why she threw her seat out the window. And then because of this, you're forced to go home early on the kindergarten bus. Yeah, I would be kind of mad too, but that's the recurring gag that constantly happens to Todd. He doesn't understand their extremely weird rules, and because of that, his teacher, Mrs. Jules, always sends him home on the kindergarten bus. Now, me personally, when I was watching as a kid, I never really understood how that's like a punishment, getting sent home early on a bus with kindergartners, but that bus was wild, a bunch of snot-nosed little kids being loud, and ugh, I hate it though. Anyway, I told you about the plot, like I always do, and I promised that I would do. Now I'm about to break down each character and they voice actors. Now there's a lot of characters and faculty members and students in Wayside, and each one of them are incredibly interesting, and like, you think the amazing world of Gumball has a colorful classroom. Here you got the three Eric's, you got the girl that always sleeps, you got the kid that can only walk upside down on his hands. And because the classroom is so big, I can't exactly tell you all about every single person. So I'm deciding to do the main characters and a few of the teachers. So we're gonna start this off with our boy Todd. Todd is voiced by the amazing Mark Randolph. Now, Todd is supposed to be the everyday character that the audience can relate to the most. Since there's such this randomness going on, there has to be something we can relate to. And that's his role in the story. Now, if you want to know where you might have heard Todd's voice before, check no further than Joe from Time Warp Trio. Next character, next we have Marcy, and I hope we're pronouncing this right. There's two different pronunciations between the Wayside movie and the Wayside cartoon, how you pronounce her name. There's also a difference with her hair color in the Wayside movie and the Wayside cartoon. She's seen to have pink hair at the beginning of the movie, but it's changed to this darker blue for the cartoon series. Now, Marcy is the typical tomboy. She has a pet, um, what's it called, porcupine in her bag that she keeps, and she is incredibly fast on her roller baits. But even more off, she is in love with our boy Todd, and she shows this love by punching him as hard as he can, through whatever she can, down the stairs, up in the space, through a wall. It's This is like one of the best romances I've ever seen in my life. She is voiced by the amazing Denise Oliver. You might have heard her in a little character called Kitty from the TV show Sidekicks that came on Cartoon Network. Next, next I have the pleasure to introduce you to Myron. Before the jokes start, okay, we kinda look alike. Don't say anything about it. We're nothing alike. Now Myron is a little bit, uh, well, um, according to the chart here, he's a, a bit self-centered, a bit eccentric, wants to be king. Uh, okay, we might be a lot alike, all right? Myron might be my brother from another mother. That's as much as I know. But Ryan, Myron, he isn't that bad. I mean, he, he fits the jerk stereotype, but not like a school bully. He always just thinks about himself too much. And he aims to be class president. Now, he's kind of soft bad from being class president because he was elected class president once. And in Wayside School, the only thing that the class president does is to turn the lights on and off. But you see, Myron can't exactly remember to do that. He even forgot what the word light switch was and prefers to call it the thingamajig on the wall. 
So, Myron might not ever become king of the world of class president, but you can know that he's voiced by the awesome Martin v v v Martin, I'm sorry, I can't pronounce your name. But he has acted and starred in a lot of things. I think you might recognize his voice the most from Gus Jr. in Totally Spies. Next. The next character I have the pleasure of introducing you to is Dana. Dana is the overachiever of the group, the serious one, well not too serious. She likes to be the planner. She is also best friends with Myron and she wants him to become the next class president just so she can be the vice president. Cause the whole thing with her, she doesn't want the spotlight, but she wants to do all of the work of the spotlight. Which is kind of weird, but it fits for Myron's best friend since he only wants the pain and the glory and she just wants to do all the actual work that the glory comes with. Now, she is voiced with by the beautiful Lisa NG. I know you're not supposed to read her name as NG, but you know, I can't pronounce Nig like that or however she wants to pronounce it. She was last seen in a show called Embryonic as the character Lisa. Next, now that I've told you about our four main character students, I'm going to tell you about the three teachers that show up the most, starting with Mrs. Jules. Now, Mrs. Jules in the movie was voiced by Kathy N N N Jamai, I'm sorry, but you might know her voice as teacher Peggy Hill in King of the Hill. But for the actual series, they had to replace that Kathy with another Kathy, because you can never go wrong with somebody named Kathy. They replaced her with Kathy Lekiski, and Kathy Lekiski is also known as the voice of um the mom from Yin Yang Yo, Carl the Evil Cockroach Wizard's mom. Yeah, that's kind of interesting to know the fact that Mrs. Jules is her mom yelling, Carl! Next. Next, we have Principal Kidswater. The crazy, out of control principal who acts more like a kid than anybody there and constantly calls them snot nosed brats on the PA system accidentally. Well, most of the time, accidentally. Principal Kitswater is a known figure skater, but he's also known for banning the word door in the school. Yes, that's true. It is forbidden to say the word door in his school or in his presence. The word door was replaced with a word he made up called Guzak. Now, Principal Kidswater is played by somebody named Kedor Brown. Kedor Brown, I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong. He was actor in the latest series called Kill Joyce. He played somebody named Thaimon. But he is also shown in a lot of other movies and TV series that I've not seen. So good for you, guy. Next, final faculty member I want to talk about is Lewis the Handyman. Lewis's jobs go from making sure that kids have gym equipment to making sure whatever Mr. Kids Water broke is fixed to feeding the cows. He basically does whatever needs to be done in that school like a typical handyman should. He's also one of the most popular people in the school because he knows everybody's by name. He knows what they like, what they dislike. And Todd can relate to him more, because while everybody is all crazy and eccentric, Lewis is kind of chill. Like, he doesn't show any, like, crazy eccentricness that everybody else shows, but when he sees something crazy happen, he just goes with the flow, or just like, oh, that's pretty cool. I really like him. Now, his cool voice is voiced by Sergio DiZio. I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong, but you might know him as Michelangelo, aka Spike in the TV series Flashpoint. Now, per the usual on TV rundown after I gave you the plot and the characters, I hit you with a bit of music. Now, the music I'm going to hit you with is the opening song, Fly By The Wayside, performed by Skype Sweet Nam. I had to look because your name is pretty interesting and I really like it. She goes by the stage name Server and is currently the lead singer of a band called Sumo Psycho. I hope it's pronounced Psycho because they spell it with the CY. You know, <laughs> you can look them up. But Fly by the Wayside sets the mood perfectly, I feel, because, you know, it talks about how you're bored and you want to go to someplace wild and crazy. And it's like a wild and crazy school, and I really like the song. It can get stuck in your head if you listen to it enough like I did. <laughs> so there you have it, your rundown on the amazing show Wayside. Now before I close this video, I just want to say a little thing about Wayside that I like find the most compelling. If you watch the Wayside movie at the end of the movie after he saves everybody, she says, you know, thanks for saving us. You're doing a good job fixing stuff with the school. Is there anything else you want to fix? And he looks around the classroom and he sees all the crazy students. He sees the kid that has to be upside down. 
And he says, no, there isn't anything I want to fix. And he picks up his desk and he throws it out the window. And it's like, for me, that was a good representation of sometimes you got to go with the flow. Like in life, you're going to meet a lot of people who you think are weird. You're going to see a lot of things that you think is crazy. You might even do some crazy and weird things yourself. But to you, it doesn't seem crazy. It just seems like a normal Tuesday or a normal Monday. And it's like... In the time of the world that we're in right now, we need to have a lot more tolerance for things. We need to see new things and not be scared of them or immediately judge it. We need to try to accept it or see the beauty in the weirdness that it is. And that's what the Order of Insanity is all about, embracing your inner weirdness. So as always, stay weird, stay wild, and I'll see you next time. Yo, what's cracking? It's me, King ETL, again. I hope you're enjoying our new title card. Yes, it looks kind of bland right now, but we're going to spruce that up later. As you see, we have our Twitters up there, the Order's Twitter and my Twitter. And to the right, we have some previous episodes. Now, to the right of me, if I did this correctly, if I hope I did, you have my little Christmas video this year while I'm talking about what new has to be done with Santa Claus's workshop. And to the left, you have a, a controversial crown that I did about Rose Quartz, proving that she is, in fact, still alive. Now, if you loved it and you want to see more, you can hit that subscribe button. You can follow us on our Twitters. You know, all that good stuff. Anyway, I'll see you guys next time. Stay weird and wild.